Solutions Incorporated, www.gohydro2.com. Today I'm testing a 19 plate, 6x6, dry, sealed hydrogen cell. It's a 20 gauge stainless steels. I've got it configured today with a 5 neutral plate configuration, which takes a 16 plate cell to a 19 plate cell. It's a 4, uh, excuse me, a 5N3. Uh, configuration which is five neutrals, uh, three cells with four power plates, what I call PP. So it's a 5N34PP is a good nomenclature to describe it. Today I'm going to show you a, a quick MMW test at about 26 amps and 13.8 volts. I did an update to my bubbler to make it even more precise than it was before, and I'm going to show you that okay, right for now. For some of you that have been watching my videos, you know that I use a smart water bottle that fits my um, bubbler, which is over there on the left, which I custom made, and it fits very nicely into there. I just wanted to update you on a couple changes I made to the uh, bottle itself, the MMW meter. If you look at the bottle, I got rid of the holes in the bottom around the neck, so it's a solid. We're utilizing every square inch of this bottle now. I did cut off the neck so we don't count that loss because it wasn't filled with liquid anyway. I did measure it. It's exactly one liter up to this point. Exactly from filling a measuring cup. So there's no more holes in the neck. And I'll show you the bottle sits very tightly against the straw and there the water is at the very top. To the very top of the bottle here. You can see it. So I want to be very exact with my tests. You know, not to leave any wiggle room for um, any data that would skew the true, true uh, output of the cell. Okay, so here we go. I'm going to take a pause here and go up and uh, put the bottle in the HHometer. Okay, I'm going to put the bottle into the HHometer. I'm going to force it down so it goes all the way to the bottom and do a close up of the bottle so you can see that it's completely full this time. No margin for error at all. You can see it's going all the way down and to the bottom of the HHometer and watch that water level. It'll kick up to the very top the bottle which is actually the bottom of the bottle now. I'll zoom into that and let you see it up close. Okay, you can see from the zoom in uh, the water levels all the way to the top of the bottle which is now the bottom of the bottle which means it's a full one liter test here. I'll pan back so you can see a little bit better of it. Okay, for those of you who have been following my videos you know everything but I'm gonna recap anyway for in case you're just seeing these videos for the first okay, time. Okay, I'm gonna get a little bit radical here and go off the tripod to show you some different things about my cell real quickly. Um, again, here are the uh, shrink soldered terminal connections that I have other videos about that you can see and try and get a close up of those. I've got two positives and two negatives, starting with the positive, or excuse me, starting with the positive from right to left, positive, negative, positive, negative. If you look real close, hopefully you can get a shot of this, you can see I have five neutrals in between each power plate. So that's where I get the uh, 5N from. All my gaskets are precision cut. They're uh, manufactured so it makes a very clean cell as you can see. And in the background you can see right there those are the uh, shrink solder terminals. I'm using 10 gauge wire right now. Um, I'm going to probably upgrade these to 8 gauge wire. See if I can push the cell a little bit harder and see what I can get out of it. I'm going to be getting a new power supply here shortly that will go to 100 amps and maintain 13 volts. Uh, I need that because I found that if I increase my electrolyte and get this power supply which is right here, my Mastec, it's a 30 amp max, um, 30 amp, 30 volt power supply, I found that if I get my volts, excuse me, if I get my amps over 30 with electrolyte, the current will be limited by the Mastec itself which acts like a PWM what will happen is the mass tech will limit it by dropping the current which is the voltage on the right down to 12 so say if I go over if the cell can pull over 35 it's going to drop it the voltage to maintain that 30 amps by dropping the voltage down which kind of um, kind of uh, eliminates the purpose of using the power supply if you're going to lose your voltage you want to keep that voltage constant and then your amps controlled so hopefully I'll be able to test the cell at a higher amperage with a constant voltage to really get a good idea of how this will perform in a real world scenario. Anyway, that's my um, 
right there is my 30 amp, 30 volt Mastec power supply, dual power supply. It's got two, two channels left and right there. I'm only using one right now. Again, I got four wires going to my cell, two positives and two negatives. Right now we're pushing about 13.8 um, volts on the right and about 26.45 amps on the left. So I'm going to do a quick MMW on this cell to check the efficiencies. Again, it's a five neutral plate design. I want to get a quick close-up shot of my, mass, uh, my uh, X-Tech clamp-on meter showing the two uh, power wires that are being powered by 26, 27.3 amps according to my clamp-on meter. Just to show you that the amps that are going to the cell are the same as the power supply. It's a pretty good even spread here on the cell. So I'm going to go ahead and run the test here in a couple minutes. The uh, temps on the cell Again, I'm using a Centec laser. Boy, a lot of tech products I have, don't I? <laughs> Centec. It's a laser meter. Um, the cell's been running about a couple hours, so it is getting up there. I measure the actual plates. We're about 129 degrees here. You can see from the Centec. I'm going to do another test here. If you go up by the, the um, terminals, it gets a little hotter. So I keep the button down, and it keeps measuring the temperatures. It can go down as 130, 129 at the base. Now, if I was to measure this in the front, it's 128 as you can see here. If I was to measure this in the front, I'd definitely get a different reading because the plastic absorbs a lot of the heat. So if I do it here in the front of the cell, you know, through the plastic, it drops about 10 degrees. Well, not quite, about, mm, yeah, about 8 or 9 degrees. Let's see what it is again on the plates. Yeah, 138. Actually, we're up to, we're cooking pretty good here. We're at 140 right now. That's pretty good actually. So let's see what we're doing. If we do 140. Yeah, it's actually about a about a 10 degrees difference if I measure on the plastic plates. So that's why I measure on the uh, the plates themselves on the side along the top. Okay, the we're going to start the MMW test here. I've got the um, close up on the bottle so you can see. I'm not going to cut away. The bottle's fill, uh, filled completely to the top. I'm going to back up, pan off so you can see the whole kit here. See the power supply to the right, we're at 13.8 and about 27 amps, 26.5, 27. We're getting some good, uh, I don't know if I call it smoke, but we're getting some white emissions from my bubbler. And there's controversy as to what that is actually, whether it's steam or the actual chemical HHO um, exiting the cell because the boiling temperature of water is 211 degrees before it turns to vapor. So we're going to go in more into this down the road, but right now we just want to do a quick MMW test. I'm going to use my high-tech method where I block the end of the hose. You can see the um, hose coming out of the bubbler, goes down, it tees off there, comes into the hose in my hand, and when I plug it, the uh, bubbler will start to rise. So here we go. You get this started. As soon as I plug it, I'm going to start the stopwatch that's in my hand, starting at zero, as you can see. So I'm plugging and go. It takes a few seconds to get the uh, air blocked in the stop or in the uh, line. So we're at five seconds. You can see the bubblers going up. The line's about four feet long, so I give it a little delay there before I start counting. So we're looking pretty good here. As soon as the bubbles come out of the bottom of the bottle, I will go ahead and stop the watch mark. So there we go. We're right about, again, we're right about at 30 seconds for two liters a minute, which seems to be what I get. Last time I did the test, it was at about four more amps, so I'm going to do one more video of a 30 amp test, 13.8 volts, not the same temperature to compare exactly um, the measurements that I get with a five neutral plate design.